Hi everyone, it's Dr. LeBlanc with Unit 8B, Recombination and Transposition. Immunogenetics. Our learning goals are to understand the structure of antibodies, especially the antigen binding site domain and its function, to learn how antibody diversity is generated in mammals, to understand the structure of antibody light chain and heavy chain genes, to understand how genetic recombination creates uniquely rearranged heavy and light chain immunoglobulin genes in each B cell by site-specific recombination. To understand how non-homologous end joining adds genetic diversity by imprecise end joining, and to understand how somatic hypermutation rates of cytosine residues adds genetic diversity to the repertoire of immunoglobulins. This is a diagram of an immunoglobulin. On this side, it's the space filling model, and on this side, it's the ribbon diagram. The gray are the two heavy chains, and the red are the two light chains. Antibodies, or immunoglobulins, IGs, are produced by specific cells of the immune system known as B lymphocytes, or B cells for short. Antibodies bind to specific antigens. Each B cell produces only one specific antibody, and an organism can produce millions of B cells. This is the process whereby those B cells are produced. You start out with a hemopoietic stem cell in the bone marrow of an organism, a mammal, a vertebrate, a mammal. Hemopoietic stem cells are capable of dividing into multiple different differentiated cells. You have all the cells of your, uh, all the blood cells, the white blood cells, the red blood cells. And you also have lymphocytes from lymphoid progenitor cells all uh, B cells, which uh, differentiate into the plasma cells that generate the antibodies that help you fight infection. Antibodies are made up of a pair of heavy chains. Here's a heavy chain here, and here's another heavy chain here, and a pair of light chains. The heavy chains and the light chains have constant regions that are the same in all immunoglobulins, and they also have variable regions. The variable regions are the antigen binding sites. Notice that the antigen binding sites are comprised of uh, parts of both the light chain and the heavy chain. They have to combine in order to make the antigen binding site. These regions are variable. They vary from B cell to B cell that produces immunoglobulins so that you have a, a wide variety of antibodies that can neutralize many different types of antigens. If a separate gene was needed for each antibody, the whole genome would need millions of antibody genes, 28 million, but we only have 25,000 genes altogether. So clearly there has to be some other mechanism for generating the diversity that we need in order to be able to fight all the different types of um, agents that are, infect us. The diversity of the antibody repertoire is created by changes in the DNA of B cells, just the B cells, no other cells get their DNA rearranged. There's site-specific recombination, imprecise end joining, and somatic hypermutation. All three of these mechanisms contribute to the diversity of the antibody repertoire. Okay, just to review, we have uh, antibody molecules have two light chains attached to two heavy chains, and the antigen binding site is created in what we call the variable region of the antibody. There's also some, a region called the joining region, and then the C region is the constant region. There's another little region in here um, called the D region for diversity in the heavy chains that's not present in the light chains. So we have variable region, joining region, the diversity region in the heavy chains, and the constant region. The heavy chains and the light chains are uh, produced from two, their own separate genes. So the first step in creating a functional antibody gene is to recombine 
the DNA in B cells. This is called site-specific recombination. So a light chain gene in the germline or a stem cell, a hemophytic stem cell, is going to look like this. It's going to have many, many different sequences of DNA that, that could be used as the variable region, many sequences of the joining region that could be used as the joining region, and some constant region. Similarly for the heavy chain, we have many different regions that could be used as the, the variable region, many that could be used as the diversity region, many as the joining region, and even uh, more as the constant region. These stretches of DNA are quite long, um, and the gene itself is not really functional until we actually cut out portions of the DNA in the B cells and create a functional gene. Okay? There is a recombination signal sequence at the end of every variable domain and at the beginning of every joining domain. There are two specific proteins called RAG1 and RAG2 that recognize the recombination signal sequences and makes two double-stranded breaks in the DNA. Next. And then intervening DNA is lost and the ends are joined by non-homologous end joining. Okay, sorry, non-homologous end joining proteins. Okay, let's look at this a little bit more specifically. So here we have a DNA molecule that is in um, a, a stem cell or a, in, a, in a B cell that's in the process of maturing and creating um, a light chain gene. We have up to 300 different possible variable segments. Um, and there's four different joining segments and a constant segment. So you can think of these joining segments as multiplying this 300 uh, by, by 4 to create that amount of diversity in a light chain gene. So what happens first? Well, RAG1 and RAG2 recognize combination, recombination signals here and here, for example, and catalyze the breakage at the end of a variable domain and at the beginning of a joining domain. In this example, it occurs at the end of the V78 exon or region. I don't want to call them an exon. They're not really exons. They're regions of the DNA. And the beginning of J2. This segment of the DNA, the DNA, remember, we're not talking about RNA, we're talking about DNA. This segment is going to be removed. Okay, there it goes. This is the segment that was removed. Okay, now to create a functional gene, we want to hook this region up to this region. That's what's removed. This we want to hook up together. The intervening DNA is lost, and non-homologous end joining proteins catalyze the joining of the last V domain, last V domain, and the first J domain in the remaining DNA in this light chain gene. Okay, the gene is transcribed into the pre-RNA starting at the last barrier domain. Okay, so we go from, I'm going to go back, we go from our DNA here, now our rearranged DNA in the B cell, we undergo transcription to make a pre-messenger RNA. Okay. We still have some regions that need to be spliced out of the messenger RNA. Okay, so it's in red, so it's messenger RNA, right? So this region is going to be cut out of the, by splicing here and here the RNA. And we're going to join in the RNA, we're going to join a 1B, 1J, and 1C um, domain. Okay, so this is the mature spliced messenger RNA for the light chain of the immunoglobulin. The messenger RNA is translated into a polypeptide, here it is, containing just the 1V, the 1J, and the C domain. And then it gets attached to the heavy chain, which has undergone similar 
processes to produce a functional protein that can neutralize antigens in your bloodstream. Okay, so in heavy chains, we just have we have the same thing except we also have another variable region called the diversity region. So here's another diagram of a gene. Um, it has many B segments. It has some D segments. It has J segments and constant region. <clears throat> so the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to um, uh, uh, delete some of the uh, the DNA in between the D and the J segments. Okay, so we're going to bring this segment and this segment together. Okay, so this piece of DNA is gone. <clears throat> and then you'll have your V, v to D to J recombination. They occur sequentially. And this chunk of the DNA is going to be gone. Okay, so you're joining this B region to this D region to this J region, okay? Then you get transcription, a messenger RNA is produced, and you have, um, and you remove the intervening sequences in the RNA, you process it, uh, adding a poly A tail, and then you translate and assemble it with a light chain. A staggering amount of antibody diversity is generated by VDJ recombination. <clears throat> um, the, just by this recombination, it's possible to get 300 different B sequences. You, in the genome, you have three different B, different B sequences, four different J sequences, so you get 1,200 possible light chains, 500 different B sequences, sequences, 12 different Ds, and four different Js in the heavy chains. So you've got 12,000 possible light chains, 28,000 possible heavy chains. You multiply the two together, <coughs> and, excuse me, and you end up overwhelmed with the amount of antibody diversity that's possible. But wait, there's more. The imprecise end joining uh, at when you're um, uh, joining the DNA through non homologous end joining catalyzes antibody gene arrangement um, even further. You can add or lose a few nucleotides between the V and the J domains here. So, um, or even the D, D, D domains. Um, you can insert a variable number of nucleotides here. And so that's going to generate a whole bunch more diversity um, in these uh, heavy chains. And so even though we had 28 million different possible combinations of the regions that are already encoded in the genome, we're adding even more diversity by throwing in a few extra random nucleotides here and there. In addition, B cells are under, uh, understood to undergo um, a phenomenon called somatic hypermutation. Um, it occurs in uh, uh, B cells. It's a high rate of mutation. The cytosines are often deaminated into uracils. The 5-methylcytosines are deaminated into uracils. Excuse me, not the 5-methylcytosines. Regular cytosines are uh, deaminated into uracils. And the uracils recruit lesion-replicating DNA polymerase Y, which is very error-prone. So because the cytosines are um, methylated into uracils, um, in this particular cell, because you have this high rotation rate, you're going to end up with um, a whole lot more diversity just because you're making mistakes when you're uh, attempting to repair the DNA. So in summary, antibodies are made up of two heavy chains and two light chains that are held together by disulfide bridges. The antigen binding site is formed from components of both the heavy and the light chains. Great diversity is needed to fight off infections from unknown pathogens. The light chains have a variable joining and constant region. 
and the heavy chains have a variable diversity joining in constant region. Uh, <clears throat> each of these regions have multiple exons, multiple exons in the germline or stem cells. In B cells, genetic rearrangement occurs by site-specific recombination to join B, J, and C, or B, D, J, and C regions of the DNA, DNA together to make functional genes. The genetic recombination has the potential to generate nearly 30 million different immunoglobulins. During the non-homologous end joining of the VDJ regions, random numbers of nucleotides are trimmed and added to create genetic diversity by imprecise end joining. Imprecise end joining. Somatic hypermutation rates are higher in B cells because cytosine residues are delaminated and repaired at higher rate by the error-prone translesion DNA polymerases. That's in B cells. All of these mechanisms add genetic diversity to the repertoire of immunoglobulins.